Hello and welcome to the latest episode of my creative and knitting podcast. My name on Instagram is Orchid's Heart and I'm coming to you by my fire. Hopefully it won't go out in Birmingham. <laughs> um, I haven't recorded that recently. I think I did a video a couple of weeks ago. I meant to do one the weekend just gone but time's kind of run away with me. Um, it's December, it's nearly Christmas, all the things are happening, all the making's happening um, and it's winter <laughs> which means I have less energy. Um, I can't be the only one but I just feel perpetually sleepy this time of year. I'm um, drinking a very milky uh, decaf vanilla chai. It was a tea bag that came in um, my project bag I bought from Knitting Nelly when I was in America a couple of months ago now. Um, yes, and I've been holding on to it to enjoy by the fire at some point in a cosy moment. So that's what I'm doing. I'm not sure if I like it or not, to be honest. I might have enjoyed it more as a black tea, um, but I felt like something warming and filling. You know, it's predictable, just as I start filming, the fire starts going black. So I'm going to put some more wood in. When I say black, I mean I can't see the flames anymore. life and I'm getting a bit warm <sighs> so you can't really see all the festive cheer that's going on in here because I've got you facing towards the fire um, but I have put my Christmas tree up I did put up some other Christmas decorations some of which I am going to show you um, so get cozy um, get yourself a drink the fire has come back that's great and I am going to show you what I've been getting up to this episode is actually not completely knitting focused for once. I've got a bit of knitting, a bit of sewing, a bit of mending, um, a bit of everything really. So where to start? I am going to start with something I've not shared with you for quite a while. However, you are going to say, but that looks very similar to what you were just wearing. Um, you would be right. But this is my mother-in-law's Maya cardigan. So as you can see, it was very similar to what I was just wearing. <laughs> yeah, so um, except you'll see mine's very hairy and hers is not. So mine is made from predominantly let lope, pluto lope and things like that. Um, and hers is made entirely from Gilead by Jerome Natura, um, but pretty much in the same colours. Mine has a bit of green in it, um, but she didn't want the green, so yeah. In an attempt to think, make it a little bit cheaper with less colours. Um, and it has been blocked, so it's now got like this lovely, lovely drape to it. I think Gilead blocks so beautifully, it blooms so much. I love how much it fills out. And it's quite a stretchy, bouncy yarn, so for the colour work, it was really, really good fun. I think if you're a beginner at colour work, it might actually be the Gilead or the Ulysses might be quite good because of the way it's so bouncy and stretchy. I think it's quite hard to mess up with your tension. I mean, don't quote me on that because you probably can. Um, but I think it probably does make it a bit easier. So I'm really pleased with how it feels. I think she'll be really happy. Um, I literally just now cut it open, um, which I will insert a clip of me doing. So, yeah, I mean, if you've never steeped something before, uh, it's really not that bad, if I'm honest. Um, the way that knitting unravels tends to be from, like, your live stitches up. Um, yeah, like, where you've been knitting, if you pull the needle out, it will unravel from there up. 
and there down depending which way you're holding it um, but it won't unravel sideways so I mean to be sure I have stitched it on my sewing machine so this won't come undone whilst I'm picking up the stitches to knit the button bands um, but I'm slightly on yarn chicken because I've got 11 grams of the dark grey black left and I don't think it's enough I don't really know what I'm going to do don't really want to buy another ball of yarn just to do the button band but I'm going to have to because it's a gift and I can't like I can't do it in the grey, it would look like the light grey, it would look funny. I can't do it in the red, it would look funny. Like it has to be in the charcoal colour. So I'll just have to buy another ball. Because if I do it in another yarn, all my yarns are hairy. And it'll just look really silly, so that's kind of a shame. I don't know why I've run out, I should have had enough. Maybe I've done one or two rounds too many on my ribbings, maybe. I've made it a bit longer than mine because she's much taller than me. So yeah, I've made it. It's an easy thing to do. You just lengthen on this plain grey bit and um, makes it longer. So I'm nearly there with that. If I finish this before I put this video up, I will just insert a clip of it finished. I still need to, like I said, do the button band, so the button's on and then um, put a ribbon down on the inside to hide the messy edges so that will be fun but yeah that's where i am with that one sorry i'm just reaching for my strange tasting milky chai um the next thing <coughs> i've been working on and is nearly finished I finished one, I'm just nearly on finishing the second one now, are the mitten liners for my Persephone mittens. So this is a pattern um, by Emily Foden from the Pom Pom book Knits About Winter and it's two patterns which are designed to be worn together. So you have this outer mitten and then the mitten liner, which pokes up just a little bit at the bottom. And this creates a really thick, cosy mitten. Now I finished my outer mitts. This one's blocked, this one isn't, uh, the other week. And I am just on the second thumb of the liner. And then I can block the two liners and the second outer mitt. I probably wouldn't bother blocking the liners because they look so neat anyway. But as I do need to block the second mitten, because it's quite obvious, like it's really puffy and funny looking, um, it's just not as neat. I will just block the three things together, that's not a problem. Uh, I was deciding in my Instagram stories the other day whether or not to buy a second skein of mohair because I had knit one and a half of these entirely, well, one and a third out of stash yarn. I had plenty of the main yarn, but it's um, like a fingering held with a mohair. I'm not sure that that's necessarily what the pattern calls for, but I had this light fingering and I had what I thought was enough creamish mohair to knit both of them, but I didn't. I had enough to knit like 1.25, like one and a quarter of them, and I ran out. And I did think about knitting the rest of the liner in just stash mohair scraps, so it would have been in lots of different stripes. But because of how elegant this looked and the combination, I couldn't really bring myself to do it. So I did end up buying a skein of mohair. And I did end up doing something I'm not really proud of. This is Drops Mohair. It's probably the first time I've ever bought Drops Mohair. Um, now I'm not criticising anybody else. You can all do what you want, whatever works best for you, for your budget, your ethics, etc. Um, but I, for one, don't trust a company that can sell the yarn for so little. Um, so I'm not very proud of myself, but um, I really couldn't bring myself to spend £10 on a ball of mohair plus postage just to finish a mitten liner. It seemed really decadent. And um, I've already spent quite a lot of money on craft things that week, which again, priorities. Maybe I should have put the yarn to finish the mitten rather than spending money on other things. Um, but we know how things go. I get too tempted by all the projects. And um, here we go. So I did. 
I actually bought two because I bought this colour and an off-white because I wasn't sure by looking at the photos which colour I would need. Um, and I thought I would probably use the other pair or the other skein on a pair of socks at some point. So I did buy two skeins. Okay, sneeze again. No fluff sneezes, I'm assuming. Ooh! Um, so I do now have one and a half skeins of drops my hair in my stash, but there we go. Um, the main yarn I'm using is I think an alpaca um, wool blend. I think there's some silk in there too, so these feel absolutely gorgeous. Now I think I said in my last podcast that just the Persephone mittens on their own, which are made from a four ply, mine's um, the Resolute Yarn Base by Telling Yarns in the colour Skyros. Um, and my friend pointed out to me when I said last time, I thought Telling Books only made their colour ways off of um, books and uh, Game of Thrones was a TV series which I think is where the Sky Ross name comes from. Yeah, of course it was a series of books first. I completely forgot that. I'm sorry, Sylvia. Um, I never really got into either the TV series or the books. I did try watching the TV series, um, if I'm honest, not very seriously. And my memory more is of being a student and seeing it reflected off the back of the microwave whilst my housemate was watching and I was cooking in the kitchen. Um, I never really felt the draw to it, I think because I got the impression that it was very violent and too much violence, I get nightmares because I'm a complete wimp. So I stayed clear of a lot of things that look like might be too much for me <laughs> um, because I don't need to make my lack of sleeping any worse than it already is. So I'm a wimp and there's a lot of things I refuse to watch because just in case it makes things worse. Game of Thrones is one of those programmes. Um, Sometimes I do break that rule and then I regret it, so there we go. Um, but yes, this is looking a bit of a confused mess at the moment. I've got about half a thumb to go and then it's done. Um, and I'm actually looking forward to these being done because, to be honest, I'm a bit bored of them now. Uh, it's been going on as a whip, like combined, a bit longer than I anticipated. Um, none of it is a particularly long project, like individually. I think each component probably took me about a week maybe a little bit more than a week for these um these are obviously very plain i actually think the mitten liner pattern makes a really good basic um four ply mitten i really like it just on its own and i think that they could be a good gift knit they don't really take that long to make um i mean i have knit them everything on a slightly smaller needle size than recommended and I should probably write that on a post-it note and stick it inside the book so I don't forget. Um, because it was all coming out a bit too big on me. And I think I said that these on their own came out really big. And that is true, they're really big. I kind of have to wear them combined. Um, but like I said in the last episode, just this on its own is too thin for me. I don't think it'd keep me very warm. But together, it's absolutely perfect. So, yeah. I probably won't show these to you again. I might stick in a little video of the pair finished and blocked if again I finish them before putting up this video. So that's kind of my almost finished whip. <laughs> Um, because I really want to get this cardigan finished for Christmas so I'm hoping this afternoon I can pick up the button band um, whilst there's still some light and start knitting that um, and see whether I can get through a button band in five grams worth of yarn or not. I don't think I can. So there we go. Mm. Oh, the fire's looking lovely. Um, if you're curious about our fire, by the way, because I'm aware that it's a bit unusual, it is actually a safe. <laughs> so if you recognised it as a safe, yes, it's a safe. Um, my partner doesn't like to do boring things and, um, yeah, didn't want to just buy a wood burner, so he made one. Um, yes, and the TV behind me, I don't think I've turned on in two years. We should really get rid of it, and we haven't. 
uh, because getting rid of something that works seems like a bad idea because who knows when you'll actually want the TV <laughs> and then we won't have one um, so but there we go hopefully it's a good thing to have behind me because it's boring looking so you can see what I'm showing you um, so that's all the kind of actual knitting projects I was going to share um, I thought I might share some mending my advent calendar that I've got this year and a bit of sewing Christmas presents. So I'm going to start with my advent. Um, I have been lusting after this dye's colours for possibly two or three years. Maybe three is generous, maybe two. Um, and last year I, I just I kept seeing people post pictures of the advent. Oh, I think no, maybe it is three years now. I think I've seen two years worth of advents from her, and they've both been absolutely gorgeous. And um, last year I just, oh, the advent was so beautiful. And when she was selling them earlier this year, I think it was spring, um, I'm going to be honest, I accidentally bought it. <laughs> you know, when you're che checking out online and you pay with PayPal and you think there's going to be another, like you put your PayPal details in so it does the conversion rate, as you can see your own, in your own currency. And um, there's usually a review, like you review the cost before you agreed to buy it occasionally that doesn't happen and you just buy the thing and that's exactly what happened i just bought the thing which given how expensive it was i was a little bit upset about it at the time um but the thing is there was no going back like i bought it so i decided <laughs> that um i wasn't going to focus on that too much um and i would just have to i don't know earn the money back somehow uh so luckily you know, through selling stitch markers and bits and bobs like that, I was able to earn the money back. Because <laughs> um, that would have been a bit stressful. So this was a very, very decadent purchase, especially with the import fees. Um, and it's not something that I think I'm going to do again. Uh, but I am very much enjoying it and I'm going to enjoy it this year and I'm going to really indulge and make the most of it. And I probably won't do it again. And that's okay. So... I got the Knotty Pine Fibre Coat Advent Calendar and if you like colours like green and brown, this is the best. <laughs> uh, I mean I've never seen anybody dye more beautiful browns. I really like Grenry Fibre Coat for their moody blues, Knotty Pine for the moody browns, they're just beautiful. And so it's December 3rd today and I have opened three. And so she shared the um, inspiration and it's um, a wildlife photographer local to her um, and so I'm expecting lots of natural colours which you know is her thing anyway she's inspired by the nature around her so lots of greens browns maybe some bluey greys later on I don't know and so the first one I opened and I actually opened before it got light and I thought it was brown and when the light came up outside and I could actually see what I was looking at a bit more it's actually a really wonderful, variegated, deep green. And I have no idea if you'll be able to see this or not. I'll try and do like a video instead, if not. Um, and that colour was called Forest Bound. And then the second day, it was like a green-brown combo called Pine Martin. And so I thought that because this was green-brown, I'd end up, the next one would be a brown because it is going to be a fade. Um, and then the next one was Sunset Through the Trees. And it's not actually, it's another sort of, I guess, greeny brown, but maybe that's kind of what's happening. I don't know. So I've got these three so far. And I love them. So it is Superwash Yarn. It's a sock base. Um, Superwash Merino Nylon, Worsted Spun, Combed. Um, 20 grams, 80 yards, like we've established, I don't know what yards mean. I think it's a fairly standard um, four ply weight. And I don't know yet whether I'm going to have the most gorgeous stash of sock yarn in the world or whether I am going to knit it as a fade, as a shawl. I think it depends what the whole fade looks like. Because I'm looking at this right now and I think it's absolutely bloody gorgeous. Um, but I don't know. I'm just going to wait until I've opened the whole thing and see. I believe there's also some stitch markers by another maker that I've been desperate to enjoy. Um, horse fibre arts, am I completely making that up? 
think her name's Kayla. No. No. I don't know. But she's also an amazing maker. Um, again, based in America. I think local to Naughty Pine Fiber. Um, so they're both people that are kind of outside of my ability to get hold of here in the UK. And so I was really excited that his, her stitch markers were going to be in this calendar. I have really felt up all of the packets of yarn and I can't feel anything hard. So um, I'm a bit anxious they're not in there. We'll see. I'm hoping they're just kind of buried inside a skein somewhere. I don't know. I know the owner of Naughty Pine Fibre had a really stressful year and a lot of things didn't really go to plan. Um, and a lot of people's adverts got shipped out late and I think she got quite a bit of um, abuse over that, which is really sad. Um, so, you know, like I get it, there's a lot, dying adverts, there's a lot of work. Um, and it was quite expensive, so I'm just enjoying it. So that's been my little treat for the, for the, I don't know, foreseeable future. <laughs> um, well, no, I paid for it so long ago now, it doesn't really feel like that now. But um, yes, maybe it's a good thing that you pay for your advent a long time before you actually open them because then the guilt kind of wears off. I don't know. Um, but the other thing I've been doing, um, and again, if I open a few more before I put this video up, then maybe I'll put a video in and all of them so you can see them. Um, but so the other week I really decided I was going to try and work on a few things I've been putting off for a really long time and that involved mending socks and working on a few of those things I said I was going to do in my autumn sewing makes video. So I just wanted to share some of my darning because I was really proud of how neat it is. And so I kind of with these just tried to sort of weave a bit on the bottom. So I was picking up every other stitch um, and then weaving through. And so the most of this sock, these socks are made from Snowdonia um, sock yarn, which is by John Arben, and is a, not by John Arben, by Garthenor, and is a no nylon sock yarn. Um, I mean, these are the plainest socks in the world, uh, but I did the heels and toes out of Drover because um, I had a bit, um, I had a, a skein in a similar colour, you know, it's a bit darker than the main colour, and I thought that I'd add some strength to the heels and toes. And... Um, but it's the balls of my feet I actually wear through things first. So really, I probably should have done half a foot in Drover. Um, but I wanted to try out a no nylon sock yarn. I wanted to try the Drover, um, the Snowdonia. I'm wearing these in the house. I don't wear them out of the house because of the no nylon. Um, but I think I wore these nearly every day last autumn and winter. And I haven't worn them yet. I haven't worn them that. I haven't worn them yet this year because they had holes, they were about to get holes and they needed to mend them, so it took me kind of a while to get around to that. So now that they are mended, I am going to put them back into rotation and I can start wearing them around the house again. I also mended, mended? God, my ability to say things is uh, obviously going a bit squinky. I also mended my one of my first pairs of socks actually, and these are made in Amble by the Fibre Company. I totally re-knit the toe on these in John Arbin Exmoor sock because they were a bit short and I was wearing through them because they were too short. So I did that and then I mended the ball of the foot as well as I had to mend and reinforce the heel as well. So that's another pair of socks back, um, and I really like these. I think they're really cheery, and I love the colour combination. And um, it is a really cosy sock blend, but I'm very drapey because there's a bit of alpaca in there, um, but not the most hard wearing, unfortunately. So, yeah. But I do, recommend, I do wear them in shoes. I do wear them out of the house. Um, I do wear them to work. So actually, they've done quite well. that combination is um even worse now it's cold uh, and then so the last two things i wanted to show you are christmas presents um two one well it's three things two are finished one's a work in progress so i'll start with the finished things i think i mentioned in my autumn mix video that i wanted to make some christmas stockings so i have done that
And I have made these entirely using stuff I had in the house. Um, the oatmeal linen is left over from making my quilt. The scraps, the green is left over from a skirt. And then the red check and the red. My mum bought some really nice linen bedding in the summer. Uh, but the pillow slips were all massive and so we cut them down and so she had some scraps left of red and red check i'm not really a red or red check person but i thought they looked quite christmasy and festive and so i made these two sawtooth panels and um turned them into cotton stockings the wadding is actually um the recycled plastic wadding that you get in like um hello fresh boxes i've been collecting all the wadding that came in my because we did it once so we had a little bit but i've been collecting all like the wool wadding and stuff that i get um given in food boxes veg boxes and friends give it to me as well and i put all that on the garden because it's biodegradable and it smells to be honest um but the plastic based stuff i didn't really know what to do with because it was quite thick um and plastic so i actually pulled it apart split it into two pieces um and used it to make these stockings i still have a bit left um, but yeah, I mean, they're a bit wonky. I made up the pattern, didn't really know what I was doing, but it was fairly straightforward. Um, I followed a tutorial for the sawtooth blocks. They're also wonky and not perfect. And then I sort of put a bit on the top of the sides and the bottom, and then I cut out some stocking shapes, the same for the inside. I made the insides a bit longer so they could come out and fold over the top and just stitched it all together with some ribbons to hang them up. And so there's one for me and one for my partner. Um, he asked for some really boring practical things for Christmas. Um, what is called a socket set, which is some kind of tooling. Um, they're really heavy and really boring. And I thought, mm, like, I don't really want to give him just this for Christmas, even though it's what he really wants, but fine. Um, I am going to fill the stocking with some small treats, um, you know, like candy and I don't know some other bits and bobs I think you might like, um, some unusual beers, um, and some nice treats that are less practical and boring. Um, but yeah, and I hopefully have enjoyed that too. Um, and so on, on a similar thread, I am working on my mum's Christmas present, which is going to be a hot water bottle cover. And so I'm about this far at the moment. So I did, again, with her leftover uh, pillowcase scraps, I made a sawtooth block, this one's actually even wonkier, frustratingly, than the ones that were on the stockings. Um, and I've appliqued it to this really nice, soft, quilted jacquard cotton from um, Merchant Mills. I bought a remnant when I went there a while ago, and it's in this lovely blue-grey. Um, and so I'm going to sew this onto the front, and then um, I am going to line it with a, another reject pillowcase she gave me that's like a rosy floral... Um, cotton because she really likes that kind of print um, but she had too many pillowcases and to be honest it's not really me so I think it would complement the colours of this really well and I'm going to line it with that so hopefully I can also show you a little video of that finished as well and um, I bought a hot water bottle a new one to put inside um, because I know you're not really supposed to keep hot water bottles for too long because they perish so I thought I'd better buy a new one I've got mine here actually, in case you didn't see my last video. Um, I was kind of inspired because I made this one for myself. I am making this one a bit differently. Hers is going to be closed on top um, and she will have to just um, take, like she'll have to undo the poppers and pop hers out to um, fill it up. I think that'll be better for retaining the heat, um, but also it's easier to make. This is quite fiddly doing this one. Um, but primarily because I'm not using a pattern, I'm making it up. I did try following Merchant & Mills free pattern, but because they've got an option to do it bound, not bound, lined, not lined, that's all in the same pattern, and it was just really confusing trying to keep track of what you're supposed to do for the option you wanted to do. Um, I get that it was a free pattern, but I think it would have much clearer if there was like three versions of the pattern, depending on which one you wanted to do. Um, I got totally lost just reading it, so I decided not to. But yeah, that's kind of what I've been up to. I've got a few more projects I'd like to do before Christmas comes. Um, it is only just the start of December, so I think I do have time. 
Um, I did my big thing yesterday, which was my craft fair. So I was selling candles predominantly. So if you are in the UK, I've put the last few candles up onto my Ko-Fi page. There is a few more left because um, I did make, make an excessive amount. Um, but yeah, so that went quite well. But that means that now that's out of the way, I can spend a bit more time doing the things that I want to do. So there we go. So I hope your Christmas making is going well if you celebrate and you are making gifts for your family. Um, if so, what are your favourite gifts to make? Do you have any plans? If not, how are you spending this season? I'd be interested to know. Thank you very much and I hope you have a cosy evening.